There's a number of different species of sharks that we can catch here in Miami in the Biscayne Bay area. The most common shark we catch by far is the nurse shark. This is not a very sharky looking shark. They kind of look like a giant catfish. They have the ability to breathe without moving, so they spend a lot of time resting on the bottom and are considered very lazy. Uh, we also catch a lot more sharkier sharks, if you will, like your black tip shark, your bull shark, black nose shark. We often encounter sandbar sharks offshore. And we also catch larger species like tiger sharks and great hammerhead sharks. When we have a shark on the line, we reel it in using our yo-yo system, hand over hand, and eventually we land the shark on a platform behind the boat. And we're able to pull the shark onto this platform very quickly, and our team secures it. Field work is essentially challenging, especially when you're working with an animal as large as sharks. It's a very long day, it's a very taxing day for our team. And citizen science really helps a lot with sharing the load between us and the groups that we bring out with us. On the boat, our citizen scientists help us deploy our drum lines, they help us pull in our drum lines, and they help us collect data from the sharks, which really allows us to save our energy for what's most important, which is the actual reeling in and handling of the animals versus just expending a lot of energy pulling in 40 pound weights all day. We record a couple different environmental variables while we're fishing for the sharks. And it's really important to check on the environmental variables because it's likely that these are going to influence either the sharks that you catch that day or certain aspects and characteristics of the sharks. Temperature is really important because the hotter water is, the less oxygen it holds. Sharks, while they don't breathe air like us, they do still get oxygen out of the water and they do need a higher oxygen content. Salinity is literally how salty is the water. It's the ocean, so it's usually some amount of salty, but it can change depending on how much rain there's been, depending on whether we're near shore or offshore. Usually near shore, it's gonna be a lower salinity because there's more freshwater input from the rivers and canals, and offshore will be a higher salinity. To measure the salinity, we use what's called a refractometer to to do this, we take a drop of salt water and we place it on the lens right here. Or we can close it and we hold it up to the light and you can actually see there will be a dark blue line and a light blue line and it's looking at how the light refracts out of the water. Water refracts light differently based on the amount of salt that's dissolved in it. So it has a little scale and based on the refraction of the light, it can tell us how saline the water is. After they secure it, we place a water pump in the shark's mouth to keep their breathing during our workup. And then we collect a large variety of scientific data from each shark. But we do it all in seven minutes or less, which is pretty impressive considering the amount of data we collect. Because we have so many different research projects, there are a lot of different tools and equipment that we need to carry out all this different research. First, we take measurements of the sharks. This is a measuring tape and we take three measurements of the sharks. We take the PCL, the pre-caudal length, which is from the tip of the shark's nose to the base of its tail. We take a fork length from the tip of the shark's nose to the fork in its tail, and a total length from the tip of the nose to the tip of the tail. And it's really important that we take three different lengths because we can look at how our data compares to that of other researchers. Many other researchers might only take one of those three measurements. They might only take PCL, they may only take total length. But because we have all three measurements, we can relate our data to the data of almost any other researcher out there. In morphology measurements, we use a smaller measuring tape to take girth measurements across the back of the shark. This usually goes from the pectoral fin to the pectoral fin, and we also measure the girth across the back in front of the dorsal, behind the dorsal, and around the base of the shark's tail, the caudal keel circumference. And this is very important because it can help us kind of approximate the body shape of the shark. And this can either show us how body shape changes with age. We can also look at this to look at shark body condition. Sharks store energies in their liver, their very fatty livers, and their liver runs along either side of their body. So in theory, a shark with a fatter liver 
is going to have more energy and is going to have a wider body. We also take a variety of tissue samples from each shark while we're working with them. One we take is a thin clip where we use this pair of kind of scary looking scissors to remove a very small piece of fin from the back of the shark's dorsal, about the size of my pinky fingernail. Now this does not hurt the shark at all. Sharks do not feel pain in the same way that we do. We have a very emotional response to pain, while sharks use it as more of a warning that they might be in a dangerous situation. We take this small fin clip, and we've been sending these fin clips to the Field Museum in Chicago, who are working on a really comprehensive population genetic study. So what they can do is they can take the fin clips they've gotten from us, and they can compare them to fin clips that they've gotten from all over the world, like in Brazil or in the UK, and they can tell whether or not our populations that we're catching are connected, our hammerheads in Brazil and in Florida, the same breeding population, or are they entirely different groups of sharks? And this is very useful information for how we're going to manage these species, either within our own country and also for international management regulations of these species. And finally, from each shark, we take about 10 milliliters of blood right from the caudal vein at the base of the shark's tail. We do this using a regular needle and syringe, just like the one you see at a doctor's office. And we take about 10 milliliters out of the shark's vein, and then we can do a very large number of things with this blood. One thing that we study is the shark's hematocrit. We measure its ratio of red blood cells to the total blood. And this can help us tell exactly how much oxygen the blood can hold, which is important when studying the stress physiology of the animals and the exercise of the animals. We can also spin down the blood for plasma in this centrifuge. You can put a whole blood in each vial and it spins so fast that all the blood cells go to the bottom and it leaves only the liquid plasma at the top, which is clear. And our team can take this plasma and analyze it in a number of different ways. We also send some to a collaborator who looks at reproductive hormones and he can tell us what reproductive state the shark might have been in. And finally with the blood, we also do blood smears, which use a very small sample of blood to spread out very thin on this glass slide. And this can be put under a microscope and different blood cells can actually be counted underneath the microscope. And this is done to look at the shark's immunological health. Different numbers or different ratios of certain white blood cells, which are part of the shark's immune system, can indicate different things about their health. Citizen scientists benefit a lot from this experience by learning much more about how science is actually collected and what kind of scientific data we can collect from sharks and how it's used, and also just getting a different view of sharks and seeing that maybe they're not the mindless man-eaters that many people make them out to be, and that they're just like any other animal that people research.